Hi everyone! I hope that you guys are all staying safe and dry. Um, I'm going to read to you our grid book. It's called The Three Little Pigs by Paul Galdon. You guys should be pretty familiar with this by now because we've been reading it for the last two weeks. Um, so if you guys want to read along with me, you're more than welcome to. It's The Three Little Pigs by Paul Galdon. I always like to point out that there's three little pigs and we count them one, two, three pigs stacked on top. Three Little Pigs by Paul Galdon. Once upon a time, there was an old sow with three little pigs. She had no money to keep them, so she sent them off to seek their fortune. The first little pig met a man with a bundle of straw and said to the man, Please, man, give me that straw to build me a house. So the man did, and the little pig built his house with it. Along came a wolf and he knocked at the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, said the little pig. Not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Well, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. So the wolf huffed and he puffed and he blew the house in and he ate up that first little pig. The second little pig met a man with a bundle of sticks and said, Please, man, give me those sticks to build me a house. So the man did, and the little pig built his house with them. Then along came a wolf and said, Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. So he huffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he puffed, and at last he blew that house in, and he ate up that second little pig. The third little pig met a man with a load of bricks and said, please, man, give me those bricks to build me a house. So the man did, and the little pig built his house with them. Soon the wolf came along and said, little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, no, not by the hair of my chinny chin chin. Then I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house in, said the wolf. Well, he huffed and he puffed and he huffed and he puffed, but he could not blow the house in. At last the wolf stopped huffing and puffing and said, little pig, I know where there's a nice field of turnips. Where, said the little pig, on um, Mr. Smith's farm, said the wolf. I will come for you tomorrow morning. We will go together and get some turnips for dinner. Very well, said the little pig. What time will you come? Oh, at a six o'clock, said the wolf. Well, the little pig got up at five. He went to Mr. Smith's farm and got the turnips before the wolf came to his house. Little pig, are you ready? Asked the wolf. The little pig said, ready. I have been and come back again, and I got a nice pot full of turnips for my dinner. The wolf was very angry, but then he thought of another way to get the little pig. So he said, little pig, I know where there's a nice apple tree. Where? said the pig. Down at Merry Garden, replied the wolf. I will come for you at um, five o'clock tomorrow morning, and we will get some apples. Well, the little pig got up the next morning at four o'clock and went off for the apples. He wanted to get back home before the wolf came, but it was a long way to Merry Garden, and then he had to climb the tree. Just as he was climbing back down with a basket full of apples, he saw the wolf coming. Little pig, the wolf said, you got here before me. Are the apples nice? Yes, very, said the little pig. I will throw one down to you. And he threw the apple as far as he could throw. While the wolf ran to pick it up, the little pig jumped down and ran home. The next day, the wolf came again and said to the little pig, Little pig, there's a fair at Shanklin this afternoon. Would you like to go? Oh, yes, said the little pig. When will you come get me? At three, said the wolf. Well, the little pig went off at two o'clock and bought a butter churn at the fair. He was going home with it when he saw the wolf coming. The little pig jumped into the butter churn to hide. The churn fell over and rolled down the hill with the little pig in it. This frightened the wolf so much that he turned around and ran home. 
Later, the wolf went to the little pig's house and told him what had happened. A great round thing came rolling down the hill right at me, the wolf said. Ha! I frightened you, said the little pig. I went to the fair and I bought a butter churn. When I saw you, I got into it and I rolled down the hill. The wolf was very angry indeed. I'm going to climb down your chimney and eat you up, he said. When the little pig heard the wolf on the roof, He hung a pot full of water in the fireplace. Then he built a blazing fire. Just as the wolf was coming down the chimney, the little pig took the cover off the pot and in fell the wolf. The little pig quickly put on the cover again, boiled up the wolf, and ate him for supper. And the little pig lived happily ever afterward. So that's our story for the week. This is our last week of doing it. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. Um, a great thing to kind of think about is if the pigs weren't what the wolf was going to eat, if the wolf wasn't going to eat the pigs, what else could he eat? What's another thing that the wolf could eat besides the pigs? And how would that change the story? How would that make the story different? Just something to think about. We can't wait to see you guys again. We miss you all and we hope that you're staying safe and dry. Goodbye.